now we're going to get a little bit into the science of what dimensions are. It's important to note that the term, as I actually, I said this earlier, and I'm going to say it again, the term lowest is a human construct. When we speak of hierarchy within dimensions as one being better than the other. Also, higher frequency is not always a descriptive phrase when it comes to describing harmonious or more advanced dimensions. A great example is, you know, we go, that guy's high vibe or um, increase the vibration, raise the frequency. Well, you know, the Schumann resonance, right? The frequency of earth is a very low frequency, but there are frequencies that are higher than that, that are very disharmonic that you might not really like. But the Schumann resonance is a lower frequency, but it's more harmonic for you and will give you a great experience of life. So that's a great example on why it's not always about higher vibration. It's not like, oh, you're vibrating at a thousand now, so now your vibration is higher than the person before you that's lower than you. So I prefer to call them dimensions of experience because of what I just outlined there. The third dimension, again, has length, width, and height. And a dimension that adds solidity to two-dimensional experience is what the third dimension is. And then the fourth dimension is time. And we can look at this graph here at the bottom. We have three dimensions. We got height, length, and breadth, which is width. And then we got the fourth dimension, which is it being somewhere lodged in time space right here, which is time. The fourth dimension seems like it could be an extra dimension of time or experience that some have said within spiritual community and disclosure, hey, why do you keep talking about going to the fifth dimension? Why don't we, why are we forgetting about the fourth dimension? Well, I think the reason we're not talking about the fourth dimension is because that maybe is not an actually dimension of actual physical experience that we actually exist within the fourth dimension now. And the fourth dimension could also be something like the astral dimension, um, life between life dimensions, uh, like a purgatory kind of place or a place where apparitions and uh, different spirits exist. So if we exist within three dimensions and then we exist within the fourth dimension because we exist in time, technically the reason why we're not going to the fourth dimension is because we live within it now and that we're actually shifting into a different frequency and the three dimensions of time space are, is our linear reality. And the fourth dimension is this portal to this other reality. So physicists considered it space time, the four, 4D, meaning a spatial dimension beyond the normal three. So I just told you about what the spiritual community believes. Now I'm talking about what physicists believe. They believe the fourth dimension is a spatial dimension beyond the normal three. New studies dedicated this dimension by studying black holes. So by the studying of black holes, that's how they believe and started realizing that there probably is a fourth dimension. And over here, RIT research has actually helped prove that Einstein's fourth dimension theory is actually probably true. And looking at it through the lens of the black holes and scientists have confirmed the existence of the fourth dimension that Albert Einstein once predicted but could never prove. It is the busy, biggest physics discovery in 50 years and will change the way we view our universe. And this guy goes, Einstein got it right. <clears throat> so this is back in 2016, right? So a lot of this information has been known even before that for like four years, five, six, 10 years. So we're, I feel we're going to be a lot of information and a lot of technology has probably been created around this awareness already that hasn't been disclosed to the humans, to us, to the masses. So this image right here is now the geometry of the fourth dimension. They, physicists, mathematicians, spiritualists, sacred geometry enthusiasts believe that there are different geometrical objects that actually represent dimensions. And the fourth dimension since the fourth dimension exists within the third dimensional experience and is maybe a portal astral reality or time, technically it would actually be exist within it. So the geometry of the fourth dimension should be within the 3D. So how would that look? <clears throat> so the terrasect, this is how the terrasect is created. We have two cubes, the fourth dimension, the, the terrasect is a geometrical representation of fourth dimension in physics and mathematics. So you have two cubes here. We combine these two cubes together, right? And then if you look down below here, the two red cubes are outliers of things in space that are the fourth dimension. And then the other ones are all representative of the third dimension. To, to form a terrasect, which is the fourth dimensional geometry, we take the cube and drag it 
at a distance in the fourth dimension. We cannot visualize exactly what this looked like, but it looks something like this, cube into cube. The terrasect has a volume of L4. It is bounded by faces on eight sides. The faces are cubes of volume. We know that there are eight of them since its fourth dimensional axis must be capped on either end by faces, two cubical faces per axis. Once again, we cannot visualize all four of these capped dimensions. We can at best visualize th three directions perpendicular to each other. We then somehow add in the fourth. So theoretical mathematics is theoretically for a reason, right? So this is what I'm showing you what they're trying to figure out. And I'm showing you how this actually almost proves to me what we have been talking about for so long within this conscious movement. And now here's a better example of that. We have the two cubes. We have the two cubes merging, trying to merge together. And then finally, we have the merging of the cubes. And now we have the last cube here, which is representation of the fourth dimension. And now this next image is a GIF of how that would actually look. This is the Terrasect. A fine-tuned geometrical shape of how the 4D rotates and moves within 3D cube in order to give us this looping experience of linearity on this planet. So why are we talking about the fourth dimension? Well, to get to the fifth, of course. <laughs> so the moving to the fifth dimension, what is that, right? It makes sense that the fourth dimension is skipped because of what I just outlined there that, you know, it could be time. We could actually be in it right now. If you read things like the law of one and other people, you see that they say that we're in the third density, which is already the fourth dimension, moving to the fourth density, which is the fifth dimension. So it makes sense that the fourth dimension actually could be physically skipped because it's not a place to actually exist within because we're here now and we are moving towards the fifth. If the fourth is a place to transition or dimension between dimensions, so to speak. So if we are moving to the fifth dimension, we could be moving to a to two dimensions of time and three dimensions of space that equals five dimensions. The integration point is the third point of the triangle. And this I, I say here, what the Lyrans are looking for to achieve. And we're gonna get into that later. So read that again. If we're moving to the fifth dimension, we could be moving to multiple dimensions of time that then just the two points that we currently have and multiple dimensions of space, which is what a lot of people believe means that we're going into a more fluid aspect of time where time isn't experienced as linearity anymore. And then there's channelers and there's a lot of information out there that says that in the fifth dimension, there are actually three dimensions of time, three points of time, and it becomes a triangle. And the triangle is what is known as integration. And you have the duality at the bottom at the two points, and then you have the integration point at the top. And the whole, the whole realization of why we even exist and why Earth is around is because they want a, a, we are attempting to get to that triangle state. We're attempting to get to that point of integration, right? So if we're moving to 5D, we could be moving to the multiple dimensions of time. And for example, the Mayans, the, the Maya said in their prophecy about 2012, it was the end of ages. That was a prophecy, the end of ages. The whole component right there, that phrase right there, the end of ages makes it that people started believing they meant the end of everything, the end of time, the end of existence. Oh, the end of the world. But what it could mean is the end of aging or the end of ages as we know it, right? We already know the beginning of new age, but the fact that they use the word ages implies time and implies linear time. So could it be that they're actually referring to the end of time as we know it and the beginning of a more fluid understanding of what time is, a bigger picture of time when we become secular rather than linear? This is the key component to realize our relationship with otherworldly beings. Since if they exist in this dimension or in a higher dimension, right? Quote, unquote, higher dimension, they do not exist within linear time. Therefore, they are simultaneously existing with us because they exist in this reality that it's just a dimension stacked upon us that really doesn't have time as a construct in the way that we believe it to be on Earth. So now we're looking at the fifth dimensional physics, physicist belief of the geometrical shape of the fifth dimension. And it's called a pentarect. Early research on 5D space actually occurred in 1921. So this whole 5D com 
um, element that we've been talking about, sending to fifth dimension, that's been around for quite some time, even before really spiritualists had taken it and became such a huge thing within us, you know. Um, but it, all the way back in 1921, there was research on it, like mainstream research going on on what is the fifth dimension. And I think it's going to be very interesting for you guys to to see what they figured it could actually be. So early research back in 1921 was attempted to develop a theory that unifies the four fundamental interactions in nature, strong and weak nuclear forces, gravity, and electromagnetism. Magnetism. So the early research on 5D space was how can we unify the interactions in nature? Strong and weak nuclear forces, the polarity of that, gravity and electromagnetism. That's very, very amazing, I feel, because what are they attempting to do there? They're saying that the 5D space is a reality in which all these opposing forces start working harmoniously together. The dimension would not be directly observable, check, Klein suggested that the 5D would be rolled up into a tiny compact loop. Under his reasoning, he envisioned light as a disturbance caused by the rippling in the higher dimension just beyond human perception. While not detect detectable, it would indirectly imply a connection between seemingly unrelated forces. Okay, let's break that down a little more. He, Klein believed that light as we see it is actually a rippling effect of light in a higher dimension having this, this um, outcome in which we're seeing light as we know it, but this is actually a product of higher dimensions. And whether that's true or not, it's definitely along the same lines of what we're researching within this disclosure spiritual awareness that we're all involved in here. So while not, detect, detect, while not detectable, it would indirectly imply a connection between seemingly unrelated forces because Guess what? Everything is related and interconnected, but in this 3D slash 4D reality, we see everything as separate, things that aren't connected, um, don't have any interaction with each other within the cosmos, but ultimately they all do. And what we're realizing when we go into these other dimensions is that these forces start to work together to create harmony. So the 5D in physics, the Kaluza Klein theory experienced a revival in the 70s, so around 50 years later due to the emergence of superstring theory and supergravity, the concepts that reality is composed of vibrating strands of energy in 10 dimensions or more. M theory suggests a potentially observable extra dimension in addition to the 10 essential dimensions, which will allow for the existence of superstrings. So this is what basically it got a revival when we started realizing um, quantum physics and super string theory came around and started talking about all these dimensions. Then individuals were going back to the 1921 words of Klein and saying, wait, they were talking about 5D there. What can we get from this information and utilize now in order to explore 5D some more? It is difficult to directly observe the fifth dimension as Klein said, and through what I believe as well. Though the large hydrogen collider so, supposedly they're saying provides an opportunity to record indirect evidence of its existence by doing things like seeing light rip from other realities and dimensions and seeing waves and particles acting similarly in which they do not even, one particle basically acts like two. So they're basically seeing that there's some sort of dimensional disturbance warping going on there while they're doing what they're doing at, in Geneva. Physicists theorize that collisions of subatomic particles in turn produce new particles as a result of the collision including a graviton that escapes from the fourth dimension leaking into the fifth dimensional bulk. Many people have said, wonder what they're doing at Geneva, wonder what they're figuring out. Someone even said, uh, there was an article a while ago that I don't think it's probably true, but someone was saying that, oh, they figured out, they created a hole in a black hole in Geneva and we're all gonna be doomed soon. Obviously that didn't happen. So there's been a lot of conspiracies around what are they doing there, what are they learning? Well. Here you go. Here's the information that they're saying that they're doing. They're trying to figure out if there are other dimensions as well. This is their own research. Physicists theorize that collisions of subatomic particles, which is what they're doing there, in turn produce new particles as a result of the collision. Particles that didn't even exist in this reality came from a collision of those, including what's known as a graviton that escapes from the fourth dimension. This seems to me like very preliminary science for interdimensional travel and leaking off into five-dimensional bulk. So a 
4D being a doorway to 5D. They said it right here, guys. They, they believe that this particle is coming from a fourth dimension and their own belief without like going to these presentations that we go to. They're saying that a fourth dimension comes off from that collision and leaks off into a five dimensional reality. Utilizing this when using a magnet to lift a pin off a table, the magnet is able to overcome the gravitational pull of the entire earth with ease utilizing this concept. Wait a second. The magnet is able to overcome the gravitational pull of the entire earth with ease using technology and information that we're finding in Geneva that is actually getting a particle from the fourth dimension that seems to be ending up in the fifth dimension. Uh, my mind runs wild with that, but I'm going to, I'm really sticking to hardcore verifiable information here. So I'm not going to go into my deeply esoteric beliefs until the end when we have conversations, because if we want to talk about that, we can. Okay, so galactic dimensions breakdown. Superstring theory, as I just said, says there are 11 dimensions, but could go up to 13. There is a possibility that at the, as the density of the entire planet shifts in relation to the distance from the center of the galaxy, the dimension can also change. So could it be that the closer to the center of the core galactic center, our dimensions increase? And our not only do, do we know that what we perceive in our Milky Way galaxy is in direct relation to our positioning with the galactic center, but could our positioning with the galactic center also influence the dimension that we're in? Theoretically, and maybe even physically, that should be true because if it's gravity is pulling us in and the gravity is so intense, the frequency will shift on the planet. And could there be 12 dimensions of universal experience and the 13th dimension being the void in the center of the black hole, maybe in the center of all black holes, maybe it's the same void when you go through every black hole in the center of the galaxy. So 12 dimensions of physical experience, meaning that you could actually be a quasi physical being within the 12 dimensions, but live in the universe. You can be a 12 dimensional light body apparition, pure energy, but still exist within the physical universe of the physical galaxy. And then you go to the 13th dimension and then you enter the void because it is believed that there are, well, super string theory says at least 11 dimensions of physical experience here, but then 12 dimensions is what many people believe as well. And then we have the 13th, the number 13, which is always about the 12 within the one, the 12 within the one, 12 dimensions, and the one void. And if you look at um, books such as The Bringers of the Dawn, the channeled Palladian information, it's said in there that we have 12 chakras that we can tap into on earth. And each of those chakras represent a dimension of experience within our galaxy. And we're able to be 12 dimensional beings that live on this fourth dimensional, third dimensional planet. <clears throat> So there are multiple dimensions of space and time. That's pretty much proven now. In the higher dimensions, we exist as light beings, could be energy, stars. And then as we go into other dimensions, we can be quasi-physical, half light, half flesh, whatever that means. And then we can become what we are now, complete physicality within linearity. <clears throat> 